Hi, I'm Sarah Rook Ruck Roosh, and I listen to the Eric Zane Show podcast because he's an idiot, swears like a trucker, loves puppy dogs, and gave away a kidney. Now here he is, Eric Zane! Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome into the Eric St. Show podcast. This is I never really let, let that one go that long. The uh, a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. Monday through Friday, right here uh, in this little old dormer above my garage, which in the winter time is freezing cold, and in the summertime is hot as balls. Uh. I don't know if that has to do with uh, proximity to, I don't know, the garage, maybe. Uh, it's insulated. I know that. But uh, that seems to be the way it is. And uh, so now we're in that weird spot where, you know, you start out, th- like it's 44 degrees outside right now. So I really don't need as much heat as I normally would when it was like four degrees. But, you know, later on today, I need to turn the air on, which is, it doesn't make sense. It's, you, you shouldn't need the air when it's 60 degrees out. But this room is just ridiculous. It's possessed. There's not a lot I can do about that. Well, there, there might be, but I'm not willing to. So thanks so much to you for being here as we get this, uh, this deal started again. From the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio. Baldwin Ace Hardware, a beacon of DIY awesomeness in the Northland of the great state of Michigan. So, yeah, I uh, I am stoked about the fact that the temperature is uh, is, is getting warmer out. And uh, it, it was very, very nice yesterday. And, oh, man, it just warms my soul. And then I... Um, I still haven't figured it out yet, apparently, because I go outside with uh, a heavy jacket on and a hat, and uh, my neighbor is out taking a walk, lady, and she has, like, shorts on and a T-shirt, and I'm like, oh, God, this is embarrassing. I think I'm, I think I'm overdressed, you know? I mean, seriously. Uh, what, getting back from the walk yesterday... I noticed uh, the latest uh, bumper sticker. It's not a sticker. It's a magnet on the back of the embellisher. I now have a collection. Um, I think the first one that I got was, for some reason, Danger Driver Has Huge Testicles, which is isn't really much of an insult. It's just kind of like embarrassing, I guess. Uh, time would pass, and then someone put driver is gay on the back. You know, okay, which that shouldn't really be a warning. I mean, hey, look out for the gay guy. He's going to do gay shit. You know, I mean, that that isn't really weird. Or that that is kind of weird. And then uh, this one, cowboy butts drive me nuts. The latest one that appeared on the back of the truck. Uh, it, you know, every time I head over to Bosco's, um, and then I, I see, and don't forget you got the truck nuts. Yes. Someone put truck nuts on there, um, which are right there. So someone is spending some cash on these pranks that are happening to your old pal, Eric Zane. And then, uh, I have a feeling that it is boring Dean. Uh, in fact, I'm fairly positive because, first of all, someone told me. Uh, second of all, he's always there when this happens. So it's uh, pretty much I'm like I can just I just accept it. He's going to spend. He uh, Dean is a uh, uh, single handedly supporting these uh, ma- message magnet industry type of things. So good for you. Just as long as you don't put one on the back of the vehicle that says something like uh, Hitler lover on board. 
or uh, I hate the blacks, you know, something like that. Uh, Andrea says he always leaves uh, early too. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Dean. I'm fairly, fairly certain. I mean, someone actually saw him do it and told on him. But I'm just like, ah, ha, ha, you got me. You did it. All right. Uh, still no explanation about why the man leaves the Bluetooth in. Um, again, uh, the, the only people that would ever want to get a hold of him uh, were at Bosco's. His son and his sister. And then he takes care of her horses. And so I don't know why he would leave it in. I don't even, no one even says anything anymore. Why do you, why do you have that in there? It, it's unbelievable. Uh, Dean is in here saying it's all lies. Well, look, Hey, I, I haven't seen you do it. Someone else saw you do it. And then they have, have narked on you. You have, uh, narks, um, that are doing this. All right. Well, uh, thanks again for being here. And uh, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live is where you will find this show. Um, my God. Thank you so much. Now, if you uh, are listening later on in the day to the audio podcast, please head on over to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live and um, hit follow on that deal. Thank you so much. You can catch us live. You can watch it. You can even... Um, uh, darken the screen and still listen live. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you so much to all of you for being part of this. Facebook.com slash Eric Zane fan page, Twitch and Facebook brought to you by Irvine's auto repair, Grand Rapids hybrid and EV. They're awesome there. I cannot wait to see the completed, um, uh, facility as they've expanded, doubled their size. And then some, I would say even more. So that is so cool. Uh, on Twitter, at Eric Zane Show, brought to you by Blue Frost IT. And then the almighty YouTube, Frank the Tank Fuss. Uh, subscribe to the channel, bell notification. We do. I do have a bit of an issue where uh, we did the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast last night. And um, hang on, my neck. Oh, God. We did the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast last night. And I, I don't see it on there on Patreon. And I, I know it was live. So, poof, I guess it just disappeared. But I have a backup, so I am going to post that um, for you all at uh, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. And you'll be able to check out the video if that's what you like to watch or the audio, too. That is coming today. So, yeah, uh, we had a hell of a time. Saul returned. Saul, um, you know, fresh off of the week before, where we, we suspect that something that Ben said uh, kind of rubbed him the wrong way and he checked out, but he was back yesterday, so that is cool. And uh, just a lot of uh, fun highlight moments that took place as we did the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. So uh, thank you to everybody who checked that out. That was a, uh, that was a good time. So I, I don't even know what the, what the hell happened there. Um. All right. Bracket busted. My God. Oh, shit. Boy, um, I think Aram is the one who said that my bracket was so busted before we even started on the whole damn thing. And, uh, well, he's, uh, he's right. Shit. Where to begin? Okay, that Boise State Memphis. You know, anybody's game on that. You got an eight versus a nine. Uh, UConn falls. Fuck. That was a, you know, that's an upset special. Number 12, New Mexico State takes out uh, number five, UConn. Uh, Arkansas barely gets by Vermont. That's all in the West. In the South, fucking Michigan upends Colorado State 75 to 63, minus their best player. 
And the, the interesting, I had Colorado winning the next round too. So that's, that's just a, a well on my way to getting the bracket busted. But uh, when that finished, I was like, well, that's okay. My final four is still intact. Oh, 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 fucking Kentucky. Jesus. Look at this. Kentucky in red. That, that's a bad thing. You don't want the red. Red, 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 red. Kentucky falls to St. Peter's. In fact, I don't even know. I didn't know anything about these guys. They're from Jersey City, Jersey. The St. Peter's Peacocks. <laughs> I heard a, a story that... Uh, the entire budget for the basketball team, for like all their equipment, coaching staff, uh, any other expenses, is like a million dollars a year. The head coach of Kentucky, John Calipari, makes nine million dollars a year. The coach is, you know, makes nearly ten times as much as the entire budget for the St. Peter's basketball school. Is there anything better though in the world when you have these schools no one's ever heard of? where, you know, the, the attendance is way low. It's a small-ass private religious college. Kicks the shit out of, out of, like, one of the best teams in the land. It just fucking brutalizes them on national TV. It's just a forced-ass fucking right on TV. Like, yeah, you think we're a small-time school? How about you suck this dick? <laughs> fucking great. All right, more on that in a second. Plenty, plenty more on that. Um, Jesus. Meanwhile, continuing with the bracket busting, Iowa, you assholes. I had them going into the uh, Sweet 16. No, they lose to the Richmond Spiders, 67 to 63. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. I had Creighton beating San Diego State. Of course, Creighton lost. Oh, my God. Well, that's pretty much it. I wonder how everybody is doing on our, uh, in the whole group. Like the leaders of uh, of our group. Let's see. View leaderboards. Uh, How the hell do I look at the group? Is this okay? Uh huh. Is that it? I'm probably fucking this up. I don't even know this is my. This can't be my group. I don't even know how to hell to do my bracket. No, I don't want my bracket. I want my group. Shit. I don't know. Rob, help me out with this. Show me my group. I can't even do it. There it is. Chris D. Okay. I think you are all green. No, you lost Iowa. And you lost Kentucky. But Chris D. is leading the group. I think he's probably tied with several other. No. Kuiper's is second. Ten points back. Uh, there I am. And uh, I have 100 points. That's near the bottom. The worst is 70. God, Josh in New Hampshire. Oh, that's a disaster. It makes mine look good. You had Kentucky going quite far, too. <laughs> um, But I just love the fact that these... Uh, I mean, I don't really care, obviously. Um, but when the... Uh, okay, so I knew that my bracket was getting busted last night. And um, because of the loss, uh, the, uh, loss by Kentucky. And... Um, but I didn't care. Because I knew we had hilarity unfolding with the queen of the forest. Now, Kentucky, that is her team. 
And she even like knows players' names and shit. And she calls them by their first names. And and she's given me like the backgrounds of these players. I forget the one guy, the real the real top player on their team. And she's giving me his whole history. And this is like as the game's going on. I'm like, oh, wow. Well, or actually, uh, leading up to the game, she's been talking about the mentality in this. And I guess he had a great game, but it wasn't necessarily his fault. But so she's really uh, a pretty big fan. And she's sitting there and just all stoked about the game. And uh, I come downstairs from doing the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. And she had said to me, she goes, I'm not even going to bed at 830 tonight like we normally do. I'm going to stay up with Kevin and we're going to watch the game. I go, yeah, okay. Hey, as soon as we get done, I'll join you. And so uh, I go down there and uh, I go, hey, how are they doing? And she goes, they're fucking it up. They're fucking it up. And uh, it was a close game at that point. I think the second half had just started, so there's plenty of time. And then Kentucky kind of went on a little bit of a run. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, here you go. This is how when the big school just kind of starts to lean on the uh, plucky, undermanned, uh, what are they called, St. Peter's? What I say? Yeah, St. Peter's team. You know, and uh, then, you know, I watching the game and I realized that time is winding down and the game is in question. So that's when I, um, on the down low decided I was going to record the queen of the forest. Some of you may have seen this on Facebook. I'm going to share it with you now. You can tell I'm hiding the camera. I'm actually using, uh, O'Neill's body as kind of like a blocker. Uh, language warning, <laughs> like you need a, like you need a language warning to watch this show. Like, like you didn't already know that with my stupid mouth. Okay. This is nearing the end of regulation. Uh, the game is definitely in doubt. Here you go. Motherfucker. St. Peter's, St. Peter's just went ahead by one point with a minute 18 to play. That was a three pointer that they just made. Motherfucker. Time out, time out on the floor. If they lose to a freaking 15C, I'm never watching these fuckers again. Okay. If they lose to a 15, I'm never watching these fuckers again. (laughs) A lot of you quickly saw that. Uh, clip two, more Diana raging about Kentucky going to overtime against number 15 seed St. Peter's. I, I wish, I wish I could make it bigger, but I don't think I can. No, that's pretty much it. That's the best you're going to get. Okay. Hold on. Kevin's are yes. Look at look at her hands over her head. Okay, now Kentucky can can win it. Okay, if they don't, I think in this clip that it ends. This is when it's going into overtime. St. Peter's has the ball. So 
now St. Peter's leads it. Actually, it's tied. I'm sorry. Just make sure you make it. Uh, NFK commentary. Just make sure you make it. Just make sure you make it. Hey, shoot. Dynamite drop in. Just do something. They miss. Damn. Look at Bruce. Bruce is like, what the fuck? Oh, I figured it out. Look at him. Just make sure you make it. Hey, shoot. Just do something. Damn. <laughs> uh, okay. And then losing. Here we go. Okay, it's pretty much over at this point. Um, all they have to, uh, they've been sinking all their free throws. Kentucky can't sink a free throw in overtime. And it, it's become apparent that they're going to lose. 90%. Look at O'Neal. He's like, oh, she's scaring me. She's frightening me. She's at this point on her phone formulating a, uh, a, a hate uh, post on Facebook. She was really bummed out that they lost to a team known as the Peacocks. There was a lot of disappointment from people that were watching this saying that, uh, how come we didn't hear the uh, uh, Kevin swearing? Uh, Kevin was intimidated. He was like, oh shit, fuck. I'm not saying anything. And then uh, they're like, yeah, this is, this is, um, this is what happens. This is like uh, part of their uh, makeup. This is the ward makeup, you know, these simpletons. No hesitation and no question. St. Peter's in overtime, 8 of 10 at the free throw line. Kentucky 1 of 6. 1 of 6 at the free throw line. You, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> Peacocks. Yeah. Shut up, Kevy. Shut up, Kevy. Because Kevin's laughing at her. Shut up, Kevy. <laughs> um, so, after posting that, um, I pointed it out to her. This is like several minutes later. She's laying in bed. You recorded me? I go, yeah. Oh, yeah. of course. <laughs> oh, yes, I recorded you. Are you kidding me? It's so fucking great. Flipping off the TV, just like Kevin. Next thing you know, Eric is going to be washing, washing her butt. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Kenny writes a quote from Bruce. Why is she acting like the old guy who never leaves the chair? Uh, great Gabagool. Poor NFK. He's so pissed too. There's going to be salt all over the Connors and smudges over everything. Yeah, I don't think he needs to be pissed off to do that. Oh, God. Spectacular. Um, Happy to happy to show it. Happy to share it. Uh, I just remembered, though. Um, there was another moment from last night, not affiliated with Diana 
saying terrible things to the TV. Uh, from the Indiana game. I don't who the fuck. I don't, Indiana lost. They got their asses kicked. I think it might have been St. Mary's they played. But the best moment of the night was this moment where somehow the basketball got stuck on top of the backboard. Like the very, very top. It's like 13 feet up. And uh, St. Mary's beat the shit out of Indiana. So this was the best part of the game uh, for them. Because this cheerleader, wait till you see this. This is absolutely fantastic. Oh, my God. What a moment this was. Watch this. They, they, the ref has like a fucking pole, and this tall guy is going to help him out, and nobody can reach the ball. She's like, yeah, this guy right here, this is the dude. That's the thing about these cheerleaders. They look like just regular guys, but he can probably bench press 15,000 pounds. He could have done, he could have lifted her up with one pinky. And she, you know, usually the, the chicks, they weigh like 64 pounds, but they can bench like 700 pounds. It's, it's ridiculous. The amount of strength these cheerleaders have. I like how the, the crowd is building and all the cheerleaders are like, oh yeah, here we go. I wish he would have held her up like a bowling ball. Look at these guys are all like getting, trying to get a, uh, a peek up her, her little cheerleader outfit to see if they can see peach. If Bob Knight was coach of Indiana, he would have ran over and kicked her in the face for that. Okay. So, uh, they need to capitalize on this. The today show featured them. It's very personal. (laughs) All right. Well, now let's welcome in those hoops heroes, Indiana cheerleaders, Cassidy Cerny and Nathan Paris guys. Good morning to both of you. Morning. morning. This has been so much fun. I was watching your face while you were watching that piece there. Both of you guys were smiling. People are calling you guys March Madness heroes. Cassidy, let me start with you. What has this attention been like overnight? Uh, Very overwhelming. But it's been very cool and very interesting to see how many people have seen the video and are reaching out. And yeah, it's just been really cool. Nathan, here's, here's what I wondered. I mean, you guys moved on that ball pretty quickly. Did you take it upon yourselves to, to do it? Or did someone say, hey, hey, could you could you maybe help us out here? Well, they kept trying different ways and nothing really was working. And so all of us kind of looked at each other and our captain, Ethan, was like, we need the tallest guy to lift somebody up to so see if we can funny. get to the top of the backboard. So I'm one of the tallest on a team. So I grabbed Cassidy and said, maybe this will work. <laughs> Well, listen, I know this is what you guys do day in and day out, and I'm sure you guys have been cheering for, for, for years at this point. Cassidy, were you nervous at all? No, that, I mean, doing an extension is, you know, something that we, it's like, warm basic. up doing. Yeah. So, but I guess to, like, everyone else, you've never, like, really paid attention or watched, like, the cheer team and what, like, we normally do and stuff. It's probably really crazy to see a girl on top of a guy's hands grabbing a <laughs> I mean, but um, yeah, I wasn't nervous. <laughs> and you really went after it too. I yeah. mean, that's, that's the thing. I, and, and the crowd, the crowd went wild. It was like, imagine she's like, I'm really into fisting. So this is, this is, no, this is, oh no. The loudest cheer <laughs> of the night. Explain the energy there in, in that arena after you snagged the ball, Nathan. Well, as cheerleaders, we're always looking for a reaction from the crowd. So, for us to be doing something that gets that kind of reaction um, is kind of a once in a lifetime thing. And it was just so cool to have everybody uh, cheering us on as cheerleaders. Oh, it's awesome. I'm looking at this picture here. I really hope somebody gets that for you and puts it in a frame. It's a pretty awesome picture there of you holding her up. Yes. Uh, Cassidy and Nathan, uh, Indiana, they should have suited you guys up last night. They (laughs) could have used you on the court. Uh, The Hoosiers didn't win, but you guys. It'd be great if they freak out there and go, yeah, fuck you. I certainly call him like a racial slur or something. Did. Cassidy, Nathan, thank you both. Have a great weekend. Congrats, guys. So thank much. you, guys. Get some sleep. <laughs> All right, up next. Get some sleep. Well, there you go. All's well that ends well. Um. Yes. So only fans. Yes. My God. That would. Uh, well, probably not. I'm just gonna give give up on that. This whole thing's kind of like 
gone in the shitter. Um, all right. Um, so your bracket is busted, and uh, we're all screwed now. Uh, for the rest of you that are still doing well in our bracket, good luck to you. We have games again today, and uh, yeah. Ours isn't for money. Okay, moving on. The story of the uh, of the Japanese mermaid. This actually came up on the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, um, and I I needed to get into it a little bit more to get more information about this whole thing going on. But uh, holy shit, I was like, come on, okay. I'll show it to you. This is. The Japanese m- mermaid. Uh, it's uh, several hundred years old. It was uh, discovered. And uh, not sure what is going on here. It uh, appears to be some type of creature. Resembles a mummified fish monkey to some degree. Uh, it's It's absolutely horrible to look at. I hate it. Sharp teeth, uh, it, hair, the whole deal. My God, that is grotesque. That kind of looks like the NFK's foot before I started to put medicine on it in the last handful of weeks. Scientists working to unravel the mystery of a 300-year-old mummified mermaid with a as it says, human face and tail. I don't know if that's necessarily a human face. It's pretty horrible. Um, all right. Hey, um, hang on a second. Uh, okay, sorry. But the uh, logical explanation of this is everybody's like, oh my God, it's a mummy. It's, 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 uh, it's a mermaid. It's a mummy. It's, and it's like, uh, you assholes. Now they're just saying, yeah, we're pretty sure it's just a fish. Some asshole. You see assholes existed like this that many years ago, 1741, uh, 1736 to 1741 is when they think that this happened off the Japanese Island of Shikoku. They suspect some fucking prankster back then cut a fucking monkey in half and then cut a fish in half and sewed it together (laughs) and then they uh like would worship this thing these crazy fucks in japan would worship this thing and they came up with that if you eat the flesh of the mermaid you will live forever because when they found the this fucking thing and they opened it up, uh, there, there's like a note in there that says, yeah, eat the flesh of the mermaid and now you will live forever. So some asshole decided to do that and then all the Japanese people are like, oh my God, this is great. Yes, uh, we will never die. Japanese mermaids have a legend of immortality. Hiroshi Kinoshida who came, uh, who helped discover this thing, said the bizarre creature could have religious significance. It's a fucking prank, for God's sake. Jesus. Uh, It is said that if you uh, eat the flesh of the mermaid, you will never die. There's a legend in many parts of Japan that a woman accidentally ate the flesh of a mermaid and lived for 800 years. The Yao Bakuni legend is uh, also preserved near the temple where the mermaid mummy was found. I heard that some people believing in the legend used to eat the scales of mer. This is, and then this is the guy who's kind of like leading the research here. He's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in charge of this whole thing. It's a fucking prank. Jesus. But that's a good one. That is funny and excellent that this kind of unfolded this way. How stupid is this? Um, There's also a legend that a mermaid, uh uh-oh, predicted an infectious disease. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. A historic letter dated 1903, apparently penned by a former owner, was stored alongside the mummy and gives a story about its uh, provenance. provenance? 
A mermaid was caught in a fish catching net in the sea. The letter states the fisherman who caught it did not know it was a mermaid, but took it to Osaka and sold it as unusual fish. Wow. Maybe this is what was in the wet market in China. My ancestors, my ancestors bought it and kept it as a family treasure. Look at here's the the little guy is uh is stored in the thing here in the little mermaid coffin. Little fucker. Creepy as fuck. Can you imagine finding this thing and opening it up and you're like, "Holy shit, what the fuck is this?" You're going to think it's a mermaid. Um, it looks like a fish with scales in the lower body and a primate with hands and a face on the upper body. A similar specimen was exhibited by P.T. Barnum, uh, whose life inspired the 2017 blockbuster The Greatest Showman as at his uh, American Museum in New York before it burned down in 1865. So, obviously, this is not a mermaid. It's a G.D. Uh, some asshole, the fact that he had to saw a monkey in half and saw a fish in half, you know, but you don't think that when you see it, when you see something like this, you want to believe it. You're like, Oh my God, is this really a mer? No, it's not a mermaid. You asshole. Um, likely caught off the coast of Fiji and later purchased from Japanese sailors. Well, because they indicate that there's a creator from the torso and head of a monkey sewn onto the back half of a fish was likely caught. So someone would have had to have thrown it in the water. I doubt that the monkey was still alive with a fish lower body. He would have bled out by then. They probably threw it out there or like threw it when they were pulling in the nets, you know, like, Hey, holy shit. Or maybe the guy had it in his pants on the boat. And just like, oh my, hey, look at here. It, amongst these fish is this mermaid. And then he got rich, you know? In Japanese folklore, there exists a creature called whatever, which is described as having a monkey's mouth with fish-like teeth and a body covered in golden scales. So it's fake news. This is as, um, this is as much of uh, fake news as Trump won. That's what this is. In fact, the likelihood of this actually being a mermaid is more likely than the election being rigged. So at the end of the day, you know, this has been happening um, uh, for the entirety of recorded history. So congratulations to the guy for the joke that he pulled so many years ago, and it is now coming to fruition. Congratulations. Looks cool, though. I like it. All right. The Patreon uh, bonus podcast happens Monday through Friday. Thank you so much for being part of it. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. And, uh, yeah, I've uh, sorry about what happened with the Ben podcast. I could have swore it was there. And uh, then it's not, so I'll re- re-upload that for you. I just dropped a new episode of the Insane Asylum a lot of help with the curation. Thank you to everybody who sent along uh, song suggestions for that. And I uh, hope you enjoy that. JC's Tales from the Road. You're like, who is that JC guy? Um, that's the dude who is co-owner of the radio station. Him and his wife, uh, Cheryl. Right? Cheryl? Yeah, it is Cheryl. They're awesome. They're so awesome. I can't even remember her name. Uh, but um, that is available for you to download part of the 15 plus hours of content on Patreon, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Uh, Irvine's auto repair, Grand Rapids hybrid and EV. Yes. Thank you so much uh, for being part of the show. If you have any trouble with your car and you are in West Michigan, please take it over to Irvine's auto repair, Grand Rapids hybrid and EV specializing in European, Asian and domestic vehicles. Of course, hybrids, EVs, they can take care of you. All the dealerships call upon them to fix their fleets and things like that. And uh, they are absolutely the best. Thank you to Irvine's. You can also go to their website and check out uh, what they have to offer. Look at their Google reviews. 
Free loaner cars are available so life doesn't stop when you get your vehicle repaired at Irvine's Auto Repair Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. A and E heating and cooling. My gosh, yes, with the weather warming up early. And, uh, you know, I hope that this continues. I think we might still have a fourth winter and maybe even a fifth as it goes. Um, I hope not. But here in Michigan, before you turn on your air conditioner, uh, get that damn thing serviced. It's been sitting there. Bad things can happen. And uh, during the six months of, uh, of or more of, of no work, don't just click it on. It needs to be cleaned. It needs to be serviced. If you turn it on and, you know, you haven't, you could have something even worse happen, and you just don't want that. Looking pretty good. Temps, highs in the 50s and upper 40s, so not bad. But anyway, reach out to them, 616-516-8579. And um, you can schedule a um, tune-up of your air conditioning system. And if you need any scheduled maintenance or any emergency maintenance, you can reach out to them via that number as well and um, take care of that. Or if you need a brand new install of a furnace or an air conditioner, 616-516-8579, installing the Comfort Maker brand of air conditioners and furnaces. All right. Let's see. Jim Brady. It's so weird. I can have it ready to go, and then I lose it. Here it is. Uh, Jim writes this. And this is, um, and this is uh, he, he writes it in concerning uh, something with the NFK. Uh, I had a revelation on the show this week. And it was, hey, I have figured out why the NFK went so long without a shower. And uh, by the way, uh, yesterday, a hell of a bang up job on the fingernails. The fingernails were clipped and trimmed and filed. I take better care of him than I do me. I, I'm like, I, I he's like a classic car to me now. I'm slowly but surely bringing him back to life. And myself, I'm like a complete disaster. Jim writes, Zane, as a father of two disabled uh, children, now, um, I think they're, uh, well, it'll explain the ages in a second here. They're not very young. Um, he wants, he says this, I wanted to take a moment this afternoon to reach out and let you know how much I appreciate the love and care you are providing for the NFK. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why, why would you write that? I don't understand why you would appreciate, uh, you know, taking care of Kevin. And then he writes, my wife and I have spent the past 25 years wiping assholes and washing them as well. While we typically don't have to clean up salt on the range or peanut butter smudges on the appliances, we certainly can relate to the enormous amount of love and compassion that goes into caring for a loved one who simply cannot care for themselves completely. Your comments on the podcast the other day about realizing that Kevin simply can't do it, he writes, was very touching to me. And I'm like, well, you know, when he wrote that to me, I'm like, well, I didn't expect that at all. That it would hit home like that. I guess it did, though. I mean, I just, I to me, that was truly a revelation that he just can't do it. I mean, his hands don't work like yours and mine. And he's all fucked up. So somebody's got to wash this guy's asshole, for God's sake. So I, did, I did, would never have predicted that this would have had the impact. That story would have had the impact that it did, but apparently it did. And this and Jim sharing it. So thank you, Jim. He writes, uh, it was very touching to me. And sometimes it takes us as caregivers a little while to realize these things. And he writes this. I know that my elder son, who sadly passed away at 22 years of age in 2018, was always reluctant to ask for help. One, he was very independent and wanted to do as much for himself as he could. And two, because he felt like he was asking so much from us already. 
Of course, he would do anything in the uh, we would do anything in the world for him, and continue to do so for his twenty year old brother who suffers from the same condition, albeit less severe. Um, let's see. And he writes up uh, finally, and I uh, and I know you really don't give a shit about it in re- in reality, but I want to share that there are programs available through Medicare and other community agencies that provide funding for caregivers. Oh, no, I give a shit. I definitely give a shit about that. He says, even if they are family members, if you've never investigated that, it might be something you might want to look into as a way to bring some extra cash into the household to pay vet, uh, vet bills, Madison's car repair, etc. Thanks for your time and be well, Jim. And um, I wrote back, um, hey, Jim, thanks so much. Uh, your email made my day. Thank you. Yep, we've bonded through his care. I'm grateful for it. I just added toenails and fingernail care to the repertoire. Ha ha, poor guy. He's doing great, though. He's my buddy, even though I bitch about him. I am aware of those types of programs you described. I started to look into it, but ran out of time. And that's true. And then I added, finally, sorry about sorry about the loss of your son. I cannot imagine. Peace, Eric. Um, yeah, I guess I found this out from Veldink that, um, and I, I think I've talked about this. The state loves it when uh, this scenario happens because technically um, he Kevin is allowed um, to receive care by the state. Housing and um, nursing care. So like if he was alone in the world, he would have that afforded to him and the state pays for it. And it's expensive, super expensive. So what they do to encourage at home care like this, um, they like give you money for that. And I'm like, what they do? And he goes, Oh yeah. And it's, uh, you, they actually, you it's like a timesheet. You write down like um, like what you did, shower, ass washing, uh, fingernail clipping, and then they give you like a certain amount of money to cover the cost of, uh, of taking care. So I'm like, well, yeah, I, I definitely do want to look into that. I mean, if that's how it works, I'll be happy to do that. But I just haven't had any fucking time. I've been too busy washing his asshole. God knows I haven't been cleaning or taking care of the basement. bomb shelter like i'm gonna have a fucking bomb shelter i'm gonna be painting the basement while bombs are dropping all around us what an asshole um let's see will i have an opportunity this weekend uh no not at all i have a meeting downtown grand rapids then i have to come home Get ready for the hockey game. Do the hockey game. Post-game auction. Where I might refer to a lady who looks like a man as sir. That story's worth repeating again, isn't it, Boring Dean? Motherfucker. Happened twice. The first time, it might have been three times. Uh, Hell, I don't know. It all runs together now, Dean. Dean, did you witness the first one or did you just witness the, I I forget what you actually saw. It was a uh, auction for the Grand Rapids Griffins Jersey auction. And this one hand kept going up in the back of the room. She, he wanted this Jersey and, uh, oh yeah. Dean says three times. He's seen this happen. Kept referring to she as a he. She walked up and, you know, she looked like one of the funny girls. She walked up to get her jersey and she said, I'm a girl. And I went, oh, no, fuck me. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what? If let's Let's, let's think about that. You cannot be... Uh, uh, disgruntled when you look like a dude and you're in the back of the room and there's all sorts of things obstructing my vision. I mean, she looked like fucking Sam Elliott. I was waiting for her to say, hey, 
beef. It's what's for dinner. Dean says the lady in front of her said she looked like a man. Oh, yeah. And I, I, that would be something if she heard that because she could probably kick all of our asses. My God. Aram says, how do you keep getting asked to be the MC for these events? I don't know. Probably because they're so fucking funny. Think about it. That's a reason to go. Uh, uh, saying to chicks that look like dudes, calling them dudes, and then they fucking say, I'm a chick. Oh, man. That is uh, that is crazy shit. So anyway, uh, auction, post, uh, post game. And then, you know, Saturday, it's birthday day for the for my dad. So this is going to be spectacular. I cannot wait for that. And I can't wait to show you on Twitch the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Dear Meathead Live event that we're going to do. So that is, uh, that is going to be great. I, I cannot wait to share that with you on Saturday over at Charity Scam Mike's house. Okay, now that leaves Sunday open. Okay. Let's see what's going on Sunday. Not a damn thing. All right. Family dinner. That's it. Okay. Great. All right. Oh, shit. Speaking of the NFK. Um. In addition to taking care of him, I am uh, I am kind of trying to uh, uh, impress upon him the importance of you know maybe clean up your mess. We've had the various discussions about the salt on the range top. Prepare your food over the sink now, please. You know things like that. Today, and this is another thing he does. He'll um, fill up a big tumbler full of ice because he can't put his water bottle up to the ice maker because the ice where the ice comes out is bigger than the water bottle. So yes, the ice will go into the water bottle, but also leave not be going in the water bottle and it just flies everywhere on the fucking floor. So he puts it in a cup and then he kind of puts his hand over the top of the water bottle and dumps the cup of ice into it. Fine. Um, in fact, I even suggested that he do that. That is easier for him. But the problem is uh, a ton of the ice does not go, it still does not go into the uh, water bottle. And it, it lands on the same area where the salt would land. And that led to the salt and the water mixing, running down the side of the cabinetry, touching the side of the oven, and now it's rusting like my fucking Chevy. And can you believe this? He's destroyed an ice maker. He's destroyed a microwave. And now my fucking oven is rusting out because uh, the same solution you would put to melt the fucking roads is uh, go rolling down the side of my cabinetry. Destroy. I'll show you a video of it, of the destroyed fucking oven. It's rusting. What the fuck? So... That has led to various conversations about the salt being used over the sink. But today he did the ice thing. And uh, so then all the ice melts. It's like Lake Michigan is on the countertop. And I just look at it. And you you can't really, you can see the ice chips when they're still ice, but then quickly going to melt. So I'm like, how do you not see this? How, you, you can hear the ice going plink, 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 hitting the cabinetry. Or the uh, a granite countertop. I mean, it's it's obvious. And all you got to do is take a fucking paper towel and and put your hand and then just dump it into there and throw it in the sink or the garbage. It's that simple. But no, he's oblivious. And, uh, okay, now that is just lazy. That is not, there's anything wrong with him. His mind is fine for the most part, other than saying the N-word and calling uh, Al Roker terrible things. Um, but... You know, I mean, just fucking look. So today, I uh, I can see there's all this melted ice on there. And I go, Kevin, this is one of the first times I've done this. I called him over. I go, put your hand on there. He, he 
puts it right on there, and it's soaking wet. And he goes, oh. <laughs> I go, yeah. And uh, he got the paper towel, and he cleaned it. So I'm like, okay, this might be the next breaking breakthrough moment, showing him what's up. Hey, Kevy, this is here. Can you please? So there you go. Hey, I want to help your business. Thank you so much uh, for those of you in the past who have signed up and been part of the Eric Zane Show podcast. It is really fantastic, a blessing that I can do this show with all of you each and every day uh, from right here. Thank you. If uh, your business, if you think, well, you know what? I want to. I want more information. I just want to find out about it. Please reach out to me, eric at ericzaintshow.com. I would love to tell you how it works. It's quite simple and uh, it might be just what you need. All right, let me help your business. Reach out on the Shoreliners Striping Inbox, eric at ericzaintshow.com. Speaking of Shoreliners, um, yeah, that they uh, are hiring right now. So all summer long, this is seasonal work. So between right now till when the snow flies, you'll be working outdoors um, with a new skill, and that is painting parking lots. You're the guy or the girl with the big machine and painting the yellow stripes, starting pay, $20 an hour, okay? Flexible schedule, does not have to be full-time. So if you want to work part-time, you can do it. I talked to Tim Mayer, the guy who owns it, on the show a couple of days ago. He's also the soon-to-be-retired American Hockey League referee, Tim Mayer. And he worked the other day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So he needs help. And like I said, all you, the, the key information here is it's flexible work schedule. Can be full-time if you want. It can be part-time if you want. And it's $20 an hour to start. So that's fucking great. Go to the website shorelinerstriping.com shorelinersstriping.com for more information. You miss any of this, the Shoreliners logo is at ericzainshow.com. Uh, still talking about the uh, great flooring giveaway number three for Easter. Bennett Flooring Installation, 616-318-0167. Now, if someone in your circle or it's you uh, needs a little pick-me-up, new flooring, Nominate yourself or someone else. 616-318-0167 is their number, but I want you to, I don't want you to call them. I want you to email me, eric at ericzainshow.com. And uh, basically tell me your story. Why would this make a huge difference in your life? And a lot of these, you know, um, it's like I, I'm hearing not great things that have happened that have made it so that life is difficult. And that's okay. This is private. doesn't have to be public You can, unless you tell me to. Uh, and then we, Diana, myself, and the NFK have to discern who is going to be the recipient. Uh, and that's not an easy job, but that's okay. Uh, reach out, eric at ericzainshow.com, and thank you to Bennett Flooring Installation. If you want uh, a measurement done at your home for a free estimate, 616-318-0167. Call the boys Jacob and J uh, Jason today and uh, get that taken care of. Am I understanding correctly that Jason Bennett, who I don't think I've ever met, I mean, I've met Jacob, but Jason, his cousin, was at Bosco's and didn't say anything and then just took a picture of it and say, hey, there's a bunch of idiots here. Why, why didn't you join us? What is wrong with you? I would have loved to have said hi. Come on. What the hell? I, I, is the whole family insanely shy? Is that what I'm, I'm learning here? Uh, the flooring that you want to buy, I want you to get it from Johnson Carpet One Floor and Home Discount Outlet in Granville, Michigan. So if you're headed down Chicago Drive, behind Little Caesars, big building, small red sign, and uh, the sales are extreme, man. So much on sale there. Uh, red tag, I'm sorry, blue tag, save 20%. Green tag. 30%, red tag, 40%. I think I screwed that up the other day because I didn't have my notes in front of me. But um, it's already super low priced because it's a discount outlet. And that's just not in name. Um, 
they have that big space, so they buy a lot from the manufacturers, and they pay less for it because they are buying so much, and then it literally is they pass the savings on to you. So, And um, they're overstocked. They got to clear out the space, so go buy a bunch of flooring. Save 20 30 or 40% at Johnson Carpet One Floor and Home Discount Outlet, and that is through the entire month of March. It would probably make sense for your old pal Eric Zane to go over there and buy some. But that would require that I have to measure the square footage of the room, and that means that I will do it wrong because if I measure the square footage of the room and then go buy I'm going to end up buying like 15 times the amount that I need. I should probably have Jacob and Jason come over and measure the room and tell me how much I need to buy. But that means that I would have to pick up the dog shit on the floor of the basement. And I don't know if I, if I have time, uh, there's speaking of time, there's still plenty of time to reach out to the tax hobbit, Troy Ginzer tag accounting, 616-301-9516. That's 616 301 9516 for TAG accounting. TAGCPA.net. Uh, the Tax Hobbit. Uh, tax Hobbit, absolutely fantastic. It can help you from no matter what state you are in. Okay? Via the online portal. You don't have to be with Troy when he does your taxes. You can be if you want to. That's up to you. And then you can see him in action at the Little Tykes desk. Thank you tag accounting boy um i remember there was one time not one time uh of the three times that diana gave birth the third one was a bit of an issue because uh diana's um her spinal tap wore off and um so she's kind of like she's awake She's supposed to be awake while they're doing the C-section. And uh, she goes, ow. And uh, Doc goes, what? And he goes, she goes, I can feel that. And he goes, no, you can't. And then she goes, no, I can. So then he tickles her foot. She goes, you just tickled my foot. And then he springs into action and freaks out. And instantly they pump her full of body with Michael Jackson death juice propofol. And she just goes, and she's gone. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? And then she starts to come out of it. You can't like give too much or you end up dead like him. What was that guy's name? Dr. Conrad Murray. He gave Michael like a two liter bottle of it. So they can only give your body too much and then your body uh, uh, metabolizes it and then it starts to recover and then roof, you got to give it a little more. That's what they did to her. Mother's milk, they call it. All right. A uh, little bit different though. The reason why this comes up is because this lady in Denver, she had that happen, except she couldn't move. She couldn't alert them that she was feeling everything. She awakened during, and this was, she wasn't like having a baby like Diana was, but she was having a hernia, uh, hernia, hernia surgery, but remained unable to move or communicate with her doctors while the incisions were being made. Ugh. She's now suing the anesthesiologist, the nurse anesthetist, 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 how do you say that? Anesthetist. And the company that employed them, Stacy Gustaf- Gustafson says, I would say it's just a, it's just living through a medical nightmare, like an absolute horror story that will have an impact on the rest of my life. Uh, she says it was uh, like living through a medical nightmare. She says it'll have an impact on the rest of my life. She's suing. Now, in my mind, I think you have to prove damage. And that's not the easiest thing to do. Now, I mean, permanent damage. So I'm not sure if the, uh, if the lawsuit is going to work, you know? Um, she's uh, doing all this uh, lawsuit work. 
alleging the uh, awareness she experienced during her 2019 surgery was the result of negligence. The suit claims an IV that was supposed to administer the drug propofol. Hey, there you go. To Gustafson was disconnected during the procedure. That's what they gave Diana. It's a colossal mistake. It's inexcusable. Literally, the records say the medication is running out onto the pillow and the pillow is wet. We don't medicate pillows. We medicate patients. I don't know how you could argue that's not a mistake. It sounds like something an attorney would say, and that was. That was the attorney who filed the suit on uh, on the lady's behalf. On behalf of the defendants named in the lawsuit, U.S. Anesthesia Partners of Colorado shared a written response with the problem solvers. Um, we care for 225,000 patients in Colorado each year. Uh, number one priority is patient safety. So they're like saying, we'll be defending this vigorously. Um, Gustafson said she awakened to a sharp pain when the surgeon was making an incision into her abdomen. Oh, God. I had this intense pain, but I couldn't move and I couldn't talk. She was a- unable to speak, move, or breathe on her own because as part of the surgery, she had been given separate drugs that paralyzed her muscles. And she had been intubated. Oh, no. I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, I need to tell these guys. Maybe I'll just try to move something. And so for whatever reason, I decided to move my feet. I couldn't move my feet. Can you imagine how strange this would be? Okay, I can't move my feet. Can I move my legs? Can't move my legs. Can I move my hands? Nothing. Nothing was moving. She said she could hear the surgeon talking and giving instructions to other medical professionals in the operating room while she was trying to distract herself from the excruciating sensation. Holy fuck. God, this is making me cringe. Oh, so you know that when the thing ended and uh, she's like, yeah, I, I was awake for that whole thing. And like, yeah, whatever. She goes, no, I can tell. And then she starts probably reciting, you know, conversations that they had. Hopefully the conversation was, man, I hate this bitch. Yeah, uh, this you know, she's probably hoping for that. They'd say that I would, I would help her fucking lawsuit. Maybe um, I, it felt like my insides were being ripped out. Oh, God. I don't know what's worse, hearing this or watching yesterday's video of the girl who got attacked by the dogs. She writes or says, like a combination of pulling and tearing, and then at some points, burning. (laughs) According to Gustafson's medical records, propofol was initially thought to be infusing, but after several minutes, the nurse, Aneth, Noticed Gustafson's pillow was wet and the IV and the IV was not connected. She's like, "Uh oh, um, eventually I was able to move my head. And to me, it felt like I was just shaking my head like crazy, but we're told that it was very small movements. Um, medical records show Gustafson received an inhalation agent after the medical team noted purposeful movement with her head. However, no one noticed the disconnected IV until 13 minutes after that. Gustafson said she now suffers from frequent nightmares. That's what you do. You go with the nightmares. If there wasn't any long-term physical damage, you go with the mental disorder. That's strong for your lawsuit. Frequent nightmares and post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, I don't know if that'll hold up in court. It should. But I don't know if it will. Uh, All right. Did I say how much she's suing for? I don't know if I did. I don't think it says. But I would say that that's worth a couple million dollars, don't you? Don't you think that? Uh, Let's see. Gustafson signed an anesthesia consent form ahead of the surgery in which she acknowledged that awareness while under anesthesia was an extremely rare risk factor. However, Gustafson's attorney said the type of awareness Gustafson experienced was the result of a medical mistake rather than a physical phenomenon. Very true. They never actually plugged it in. That's what we're saying. How'd you like to be the anesthesiologist who's like holding up the cord, looking at it, going, oh, 
or the or the tube after the fact. I don't think this was hooked up, guys. Oh no. Shit. Um, various authorities on this are saying that uh, impact on page uh, patients can be very, very minimal or tragic. Patients can suffer long-standing PTSD from it. Um, so it's interesting. I, I, I doesn't really say the amount of uh, money that she's suing for, but uh, my God, that is fucking brutal. Go I mean, to think that that's the way they did it back in the day. You know, these types of uh, surgeries that a doctor would do back in like Deadwood time. Holy shit. They just get you drunk. She didn't even have the luxury of that. It was worse. She couldn't even move. Here, we're going to paralyze you and then conduct surgery with uh, no anesthesia. Ugh. Fucking terrible. Nick says, I'm suffering from PTSD just thinking about it. You should join the lawsuit. My God. That poor woman. Uh, All right, moving on. Leah uh, Thomas is a champion, guys. Uh, Penn swimmer Leah Thomas is, uh, look at, here she is. This is uh, Leah Thomas. She has uh, won the Division I National Championship uh, in swimming. And uh, my God. And now everybody is pissed off. This is the one who used to be a dude, became a woman, and um, despite whatever, hormone therapy, it's proving to not really be effective because... She was a, like not really that great of a swimmer as a dude, but as a chick, uh, now a fantastic swimmer. And, um, you know, this is a tough spot for me to be in because uh, in some cases, I think we need to have a transgender judge who says you can compete or you cannot compete. Um, like when it comes to MMA, if a chick... If a dude becomes a chick and says, hey, I want to fight you, and the opponent says, all right, I agree, that is okay. But in this case, you should have to have all the other swimmers agree. All the other female swimmers should have to uh, be okay with this, and they are. not So you have a mixed bag of people competing and this uh, culture war going on. And now she is the greatest female swimmer in the world. In fact, the fastest woman swimmer, uh, Olympic swimmer, is Katie Ledecky. And uh, Leah Thomas would kick the shit out of her. So that's really all you need to know. Um, according to this article from ESPN, Leah Thomas is a national champion. God, that just that just rings hollow to me. Transgender woman touched the wall four minutes, 33.24 seconds in the 500 freestyle last night. First known transgender athlete to win a division one national championship in any sport. Um, are we going to see uh, men becoming women and then competing in softball? Can you imagine that? Or uh, actually, this, it's a very interesting story. I'm interested in it and, and how this all plays out and you see the um, the upheaval that it causes. But I, I, I kind of hope that this continues to some degree so we can continue talking about it and have this discussion. All right? Because here's here's the thing. You know, if you, if you um, form an opinion about something like this and, you know, people just say that you're – like a homophobe or you're anti-trans or you're something like that. And, and I, and I don't think that's the case at all. I think, uh, I mean, I've, I've talked about a lot of these stories and I think in some cases, um, I understand in other cases, I don't, it's not appropriate in any way. So in this story, the race began with the crowd cheering for each of the swimmers. They're all like hoping and praying that the actual women, women, 
uh, will beat the fuck out of um, Leah Thomas. Uh, but fans were notice noticeably quiet, so they're like doing all the introductions, and they, you know, here's so and so, here's so and so, and then they Leah Thomas, and you can hear a pin drop. Nobody, nobody cheered. Um, there's a uh, organization called Save Women's Sports. That was there. Beth Stelzer uh, draped a vinyl banner with the organization's phrase over the railing. The phrase should be, fuck this. During the race, Thomas was alternately tested by Olympians Brooke Ford from Stanford and Erica Sullivan from Texas. Uh, Thomas led early, but Sullivan passed her. Um, in fact, Thomas led, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Sullivan la- uh, led the first half of the race. So everybody's like, oh yes, finally, finally, it's good. This is going to end. Thomas and Emma Wayant went stroke for stroke in the back half of the race. But then there's 150 yards left, and Thomas just said, all right, here we go, the power of testosterone and big lungs. I'm going to kick your ass. And he pulls away to win by, like, over a second. He, she, I don't know. Who gives a fuck? It means the world to be here, Thomas said in an interview with Elizabeth Beisel after the race. No one has the nerve to actually say anything to her or him, whatever. I don't know. Just ask the question, how does it feel to win the race and everybody hates your guts? Thomas declined to attend the NCAA required post-race news conference. That's bullshit. Okay, so apparently Leah Thomas can just pretty much write the rule book. The NCAA says you have to show up for the news conference. She did not. I say, well, you know what? Fuck you. We're tired of you. We're taking the title. If you can't, I mean, seriously, this is already as fucked up as it can be. And you can't even face the music. That is bullshit to me. Um, She said she's been trying to tune out the distractions. I try to ignore it as much as I can, Thomas said. I try to focus on my swimming. What I need to do to get ready for my races and just to block out everything. Well, you don't really have to do too much because you're a million times stronger than all the other chick swimmers who've worked their whole lives. Can you imagine working your whole life for this one race and some guy fucks it up? Guys ruin everything. They ruin um, chats on podcasts and they ruin Olympic races. You know, they ruin elections, chats on podcasts, and NCAA uh, swimming meets. Guys, fuck everything up. As Leah Thomas stood on the podium with her trophy, she flashed a peace sign, just as she did for her four Ivy League championships. And once again, the crowd was noticeably quiet as she was announced the champion. God. I wouldn't be, I'd be like, you know what? This is wrong. Take this. Uh, Today, Thomas is back in the pool for the 200 yard freestyle prelims. We'll also schedule to compete in the 100 on Saturday. It's a symbol of Leah's resilience, said somebody, Skylar Baylor who at Harvard became the first known transgender man to compete on a Division I men's team. The fact that she's able to show up here, despite protesters outside, people shouting and booing her, I think it's a testament to her resiliency. Nah, nah. It's more like she's just stronger, you know, because she can swim further, faster, longer, harder. It's bullshit. This is not hate. No one hates Leah Thomas, but it's still bullshit. You can say something is bullshit and not, and then be, how is it that saying something is bullshit is hate? 
That's not. If you said uh, Leah Thomas should die and I hate all transgender people, well, yeah, that's pretty much saying it. But if you say this isn't fucking fair, that's not hating on them. No one hates Leah Thomas. She's probably a great individual. But she shouldn't be in this spot right now. Uh, any hate is unnecessary. There's no hate. Any hate is unnecessary. Virginia Jr. Lexi Cuomo said, Cuomo, after the Cavaliers won the 200 freestyle relay, we need to look at it as we're all competitors right now. I don't know how you can say that. Uh, we're focused on ourselves and our team. Our first and foremost goal is to win a national title. Is she part of that team? I don't even know. Leah Thomas? Uh, yeah, what team does she even swim for? She might even swim for Virginia. I have no idea. This is crazy. You know, when this started to happen, I thought no way will this ever, ever take place, something like this. And then here it is. Shame on me, I guess. Um, after posting the nation's top times in the 200 and 500 freestyle events in December, Thomas garnered national attention. Her success in the pool drew both praise and criticism. Uh, some of that uh, criticism was on full display in Atlanta. Dueling protests dominated the morning. More than 20 protesters from Save Women Sports and Young Women for America chanted outside protesting Thomas's inclusion on the women's category. Uh, the group also included Idaho State Representative Barbara Ehart, the author of House Bill 500, the first law restricting transgender athletes' ability to play sports in accordance with their gender identity. It's been blocked in federal court. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to ha happen, if that's going to change. Ah, boy. What a mess. Oh, um, side story. It has nothing to do with that, but there was another terrible uh, college athletic story um, in the community of Hobbs, New Mexico, some small college. They were driving to like a, a golf tournament and uh, um, a bunch of members of a golf team um, were traveling on a, a two lane, one lane going one way, another lane going the other way small town and some pickup comes flying across the uh, center line and head on collision um, kills nearly everybody, several members of the team, including the coach dead, the driver of the truck dead, the passenger of the truck dead, horrible called the uh, university of the Southwest is the name of the school. And the uh, National Transportation Safety Board looking into it. And uh, they found out that the front left tire of that truck was a spare tire. And, uh, you know, sometimes that can be like a donut or maybe just a worn out tire on it. They both, the speed limit there is 75 miles an hour. So you could feasibly be doing like 90, no problem. And uh, that, so that was really ugly. And then they just found out. That the driver of the pickup truck was a 13-year-old boy. Motherfuck. A 13-year-old boy. Now, I don't know if that, I mean, in Texas, you can start to drive taking classes at 14. And you can drive with a permit with your parent at 15. So... That driver's a little bit off of that, but a lot of these small communities, I expect that, you know, the kids have been driving since like age three, but it does uh, bring to mind, you know, whether that, whether that kid was 13, 15 or 25, um, the NTSB is suggesting that um, that blown tire is what caused that vehicle to go across the center line not um what do you call it the age of the driver all right uh knucklehead nick says 
No way, Eric. You mean you're finally seeing what you told the rest of us wasn't a thing? Weird. It's almost like some of us predicted this. Yeah, you're full of shit, too. Uh, because at the end of the day, remember I said that uh, uh, men that become women, there are some sports that they can compete in. I, I just got done saying that. So, first of all, uh, that isn't some uh, uh, big revelation. And um, at the end of the day... Uh, I still am better than you, and here's why. Because I think, I discern, and uh, then I I, uh, I change my mind. So what the fuck is wrong with changing your mind? You're never going to change your mind. You're going to be the same fucking Neanderthal knuckle-dragging your way through life, you fucking four-foot, two-inch troll who looks up to that little fucking mermaid mummy that we saw earlier on the show. So shut the fuck up and enjoy 10 minutes away from the show. Okay, you little dick. What the fuck? I don't even know why I have comments enabled on Twitch. I I should just... I should just stop it because it's become such an albatross. It's become everybody on the Twitch, not everybody, a good portion of the members on the Twitch think that it is they are the reason for the show. And they're not. They're a fucking pain in the ass. It has become the bane of my existence. The comments. It's like, uh, I'll just ignore it. And it's it's too much. I can't do it. Holy shit. What a bunch of maniacs. Unbelievable. Uh, so, all right, moving on. That's how I feel about Leah Thomas. Um, the cameo yesterday that I shared, God, that was fun. I need to do more cameos while the dogs are walking. Hire me on cameo, Cameo cameo.com slash Eric Zane. I appreciate you folks. Thank you so much for hiring me on cameo over the years. It's great fun. And only 15 bucks. I can make it as nice and sweet or as mean as you want me to make it. Just let me know. Uh, you can uh, go to the Cameo, download the Cameo app, or you can go to Cameo.com uh, slash Eric Zane, and uh, it's a whole lot of fun. Thank you for signing up on Cameo. Bosco's Pub is where I want you to go for lunch or dinner or just hanging out or watching the tournament, whatever it may be. Bosco's Pub in Hudsonville, Michigan, part of Terra Square. Uh, Bosco'sPub.com. Great burgers, great beer, great mixed drinks, no Russian vodka, and a whole lot of fun. Bosco's Pub. In Hudsonville. Blue Frost IT invites you to check them out. Uh, if you're making any upgrades to the tech in your business, call upon Blue Frost IT. Give them a call, 616-285-50 for Blue Frost IT. That's 616-285-50. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. So what you do is you have them show up at your place for a complimentary consultation You tell them what you do with your business, and they're going to tell you what you need to make your business hum, the right type of tech. They'll help you set it up, and then they can become your managed IT service provider. If you're at home working from home, you want your computer working a little faster, you might want to think about a solid-state hard drive. Uh, I did that with an old laptop, and that thing runs like it's brand new. Blue Frost IT. You can also call and ask about a gaming computer. Some of you nerds sit there and you play video games forever. You might need a great gaming computer. Blue Frost IT can help you every step of the way. 616-200-8550. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. If you need a mortgage, that's who I'd like you to call. In fact, go ahead and call any other uh, folks you may have worked with in the past for a mortgage or somebody new. I don't care. As long as Mario is part of that process. Works, uh, works out for any state in the union with the exception of Maine, South Carolina, Alaska, and Hawaii. Thank you to Mario 
and my friends at the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Okay. So you've heard about the stories about all the oligarchs. Here's the latest oligarch, which frankly, I didn't know what the fucking oligarch was before all of this shit started to happen with the uh, war in Ukraine. The latest oligarch, look at this guy. This is a face you make when the $10 billion you had is quickly uh, leaving you. This guy is, um, he lives in the UK and he thought he was safe from any type of sanctions, which frankly, the way this has all worked out, it, it, it scares me because um, all of the, because Putin is extremely wealthy, probably one of the, uh, if not the wealthiest person on the planet, he owns all the banks. Um, he's worth billions upon billions of dollars, but all of his billionaire friends are getting fucked. And the idea was, hey, let's just go take their money and their yachts and their super yachts, and then they'll demand something happen with Putin. Now, I don't know if that's going to do anything. Um, But in my opinion, when you have a crazy guy who's willing to blow up the orphanage, in fact, on the news this morning, there was a list of all these targets that he blew up. And I'm not kidding you. It was school for the blind school for the deaf, uh, orphaned, children's hospital, hospital for women, uh, maternity ward. That's what's going on there. As it goes, I don't think this guy is of, his, uh, is of sound mind. So that's why it's a little, it's a little crazy to me that um, anybody can expect anything other than a nuclear attack at some point. And you're like, Eric, you got to stop talking about that. It's like, I don't know. I don't think it's that far-fetched. In fact, I just saw an article, uh, Bloomberg put out an article um, about this exact thing yesterday. Russian oligarch Mikhail Fridman is fucked. He lives in the UK, and this guy thought that he could, um, because he he claims that he is um, not supporting the war, and he's a good guy, and he's been very helpful, and He's been trying to, uh, he thought that he would not have any sanctions that were levied against him, but that's not true at all. The UK took all of his money and they've, they're giving him an actual allowance and the allowance they're giving him is $3,300 a month. So it's like a, a social security check. So the guy has $10 billion. He says now he doesn't know how to live. Three weeks after being hit with say, with sanctions. He said in an interview that he didn't know how to live three weeks after coming under sanctions. He's worth $10.1 billion. Uh, said he was sanctioned by the European Union on February 28th and by the UK on March 15th. He described the sanctions as groundless and unfair. Well, yeah, of course it's unfair. About as unfair as blowing up uh, a fucking orphanage. Sorry. Since the invasion began... He's lost $4 billion, never to return, according to Bloomberg. I don't know how to live. I don't know. I really don't know. He is the co-founder of the London investment firm Letter One and former board member of the Russian banking company Alpha Bank. The allowance is being given to him. He has to apply for a license to spend money. It's like fucking Britney Spears. Before the British government decides how reasonable the request is. So if, I don't know, if he wants to go get a cup of coffee, he has to apply for it. He says, my problems are really nothing compared with their problems. He told Bloomberg, referring to Ukrainians trapped in the conflict. Well, I'm glad you recognize that. He resigned from the board of Alpha Bank one day after the EU sanctioned him. He also stepped down from the board of directors of Letter One, the investment firm he co-founded. Friedman is among the many Russians targeted by Western sanctions aimed at crippling Russia's economy and punishing President Putin for his invasion of Ukraine. Holy shit. One more thing about Putin. Bob Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots. This story surfaced after, um, I think Rogan talked about it. He knew of it and he told the story. And nowadays, all Rogan has to do is say anything and it becomes news. The guy is so fucking lucky. That is, I shouldn't say that. He's not lucky. He's so unbelievably popular now. I don't know if he gets the same amount of listenership because Spotify um, 
being only on Spotify, I've read that that might not be the case, but he's still more popular than ever. A connection between Robert Kraft and Vladimir Putin is just ridiculous. Uh, this happened, God, I don't even know, it happened, yes, 2005. Bob Kraft was in the presence of Putin, and I don't know why that was. It met, it started with a simple meeting. Um, quoting uh, Rogan, Kraft had his Super Bowl ring on. He meets Putin. Putin sing, says, can I hold the ring? Kraft takes the Super Bowl ring off. Putin puts it on. Putin walked away. That's it. <laughs> Putin said something like, hey, you could actually said, you could smash someone's face with this ring and laughed and just walked off, walked away. And they were like, hey, where's the ring? He's like, no, he just stole the ring. The Patriots owner continued to discuss this matter and in an article reported that the Bush administration actually called Bob Kraft and said, please stop saying that Putin stole the ring. It's going to lead to an international incident. That led Kraft to then come out and say the ring was a gift. And then he waited a couple of years and he went back on the story. People around the world are now viewing the way in which Putin operates in terms of telling the truth. That likely has many taking Kraft's side in this conversation. Why would he gift such a valuable and sentimental piece of his life to a foreign leader? It just doesn't make any sense, and he would not give it away in an impromptu way. That is so funny. Can you imagine being there? Yeah, he just fucking walks off with it. I guess I lose my ring. I don't know the value of it. I imagine it's quite uh, quite expensive. Holy shit. Um, the article goes on to say, uh, ultimately, this ends up being a bizarre piece of trivia for sports fans and people like Rogan to recall. Uh, the good news for the NFL owner is he has five other rings. Yeah, of course. Asshole. Just give me one as a Lions fan. I just want to go to the playoffs, for God's sake. Holy shit. I see that Brady is trying to recruit all the best receivers now. Is that what this is now? He just basically says, hey, why don't you come play for me? And then all the best players go play for Tampa. Fuck. I like the idea that was floated that uh, Tom Brady retired. So all his friends could bet that the Bucks, when the uh, odds were great, gigantic odds for the Bucks to uh, not win the Super Bowl, put all that money on it, and then him come back. That's like my favorite conspiracy theory. Holy shit. We'll wrap up with the asshole of the day in just a minute. My policy shop insurance is what Frank Fuss runs, owns, and operates. If you or someone you love is part of or engaged in the Medicare system, think about my policy shop insurance, 616-914-4070. Dealing with the Medicare system is a struggle. You might want to consider this. 616-914-4070. Frank can help. Now, what this means is if you are ready, if you're like, hey, I already got Medicare, everything's great. It might not be. Uh, You might need a little checkup. You know, just have them take a look at your policy and what you have going on because you might be entitled to more insurance or better insurance that actually costs less, okay? Try it out. 616-914-4070. Call or text Frank today. This is free. This doesn't cost you a dime to do this. That's the most important part of it. So what do you got to lose? 616-914-4070. We've got paintball a week from Sunday. 5 p.m. start for the Eric Zane Show podcast. Paintball war number 18 I can't wait to see you 5 p.m. at TC Paintball. All right. If you're going, please reach out to me, Eric at EricZaneShow.com. Or if you want, just book your own party there. You can get a lot of drop in play during the week. You got Little League on Wednesdays. I think he's got Ladies Night going on Thursdays. And you can uh, book a party. You might want to do that in advance for a Saturday booking. TC Paintball GR.com. 
And last but not least, Full House Comedy. Comedy um, all over the area with Laugh Fest in West Michigan being underway. Uh, find out where and when. Very, I see Jay Moore is coming to Creston Brewery. That'll be that'll be fun. Fullhousecomedy.com. All right, folks. I appreciate you. Thanks for putting up with the technical issues. Uh, you guys are the best. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there, uh, but uh, I guess we just deal. But uh, nevertheless, the show continues. So thank you so much for being part of it. Leah Thomas is your asshole of the day. Holy shit. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. I'd be disgusted. That is typical. Oh, wow. That was loud. All right. Thank you, folks. We'll talk to you on the Patreon. Till next time, have a good one. Thank you so much. And bye-bye.